Okay, hello everyone. My name is Brian Nettles. Today I want to talk to you about a an area that most people would consider to be pseudo-archaeology, and that's, um, say, if you do a Google search on Burroughs Cave, you'll pretty much find that everyone says it's a fraud. While they say it's a fraud, at the same time, they're self-acknowledged that there's really no proof that it's a fraud. It's just the story sounds fishy because you have a guy who back in 1982 found a cave and he pulled out thousands of artifacts from that cave over the course of a decade and was never willing to show anybody where the cave was located. Some people think they know where the cave is. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm not really certain. So um, I've met Russell Burroughs. I've been to his home a couple of times. I've read the book, The Mysterious Cave of Many Faces. I've seen the artifacts, at least some of them. And um, so I'm playing my hand at, a, at attempting the translations to see if the language makes sense. Now, we've also been discussing, me and some of my friends, we've been discussing having some of the artifacts tested at a lab to see what type of mechanism was used to do the engravings. So we've got some research to do. But so far, um, my research on the language is, it looks promising. So um, I actually am very positive on what we're doing. I, I actually think that there's a possibility we may have some breakthrough here. But anyways, um, just to give you a little more background, Russell Burroughs was a military man. He earned the Silver Star during the Korean War. He was an infantry man. He had a Purple Heart. He actually received a battlefield commission and worked his way up as a lieutenant colonel. He, he commanded the 1st Battalion of the 187th Airborne, and he actually received the uh, position as a brigadier general in the Illinois State Militia while it was still in existence. So that's, as a military career, that was actually quite impressive. Very few people make it to a, the status of a general. So in 1982, he found the cave, and while he, in the process of pulling things out of the cave, many of the artifacts were scattered because he was selling them. There was one particular guy named John White who became interested in the artifacts. He just thought the, the whole story seemed very fascinating to him. And he was a, actually a PhD physicist. His job was very important during the Cold War. And uh, he was able to use his wealth, I guess you could say, to buy up the stones from Russell Burroughs. And he gathered up a good collection of them. So many of the stones kind of got scattered about. There are people who did make frauds of the stones. We know that for, for a fact now, that there were people who made frauds, more than one person it seems. There's no reason to believe that Russell made any frauds. He claims he did not. And as I said, he's still alive and he stands by his story. So if you want to analyze Burroughs Cave's artifacts, even though he took out say 4,000 plus stones, you can really only go to the collections that are reputable. And the John White collection would be a reputable is probably the only real sizable reputable collection. There are other small collections. Jim Shares has a collection. Wayne May has a collection. There are others out there, but if you want a reputable collection, it would have to be, you know, and when I say reputable, I'm, I mean one that definitely came from the source, from the hand of Russell Burroughs to John White, or from the hand of Russell Burroughs to Beverly Moserly, and then to John White. And so it would be considered an undefiled collection. So today I want to go over the story that is told from the undefiled collection of John White of stones that came out of Burroughs Cave. Okay, so here we've got the website burrowscave.io. I've been putting this together for the last couple of months now. And uh, on the home page, you have an interview, my interview with Russell Burroughs right here. Interesting interview. Now, now I go a little bit over uh, Russell Burroughs' history and a few images from the website. Here we've got a, a picture of John White, who is the one who gathered up the best collection. Jim Shares, who's done a lot of a lot of studies and work on the story and, and knows Russell personally. Then you got Russell Burroughs right here. You got Fred Rideholm, who uh, co-wrote the book, The Mystery Cave of Many Faces. And then you've got Bev Moserly, who did a lot of artwork of the artifacts from the cave. So um, for the books section, I've taken the time with permission to take the mystery cave of many faces 
and place it on this website. Russell and Fred Ride Holmes' family authorized me to do this. I worked through their agent. And so I've OCR scanned the entire book and you can go through all of the chapters on the book to get the whole story, at least the story up till 1992. I've got a section that I call collections. Right now it's only got the John White collection in it. Maybe someday I'll have more in the collections. And uh, this isn't really the John White collection per se. What it, what it really is, is it's a share of images that John White put together while he was still alive. And so you, you click on the site and you could see all these images here. And if you click on the image, you'll get a high resolution version of the image. Okay. Now I've got a section on articles and one of the articles I want to go over with is the national identities of Burroughs Cave. So this is where I lay out the story of what the artifacts are telling you. Okay, there's a lot in here, but we'll just kind of go over a good overview as to what you can see from just a quick look from a one day viewing of the artifacts. This is the story you get. So there's the symbol that is commonly referred to as the medicine wheel. It's commonly used among Native American tribes. It's over an Egyptian water symbol. You've got this man here who has the, the medicine wheel as a necklace. There's a lead coin with the medicine wheel. You've got a pole with the medicine wheel on it. You've got this guy here with an earlobe with the medicine wheel on it. There's variances to this medicine wheel. And it seems to be a reference to their nation because on this map of the Great Lakes, you can see the medicine wheel and the medicine wheel and the medicine wheel in several places. And there's often a serpent associated with it too. And so I say that they are the serpent tribe and they use the medicine wheel as a marker for their nation. Okay, there's a, a common slogan of four symbols that are on many of these artifacts. I only have a theory as to what they might mean. And my theory is based off the Egyptian religion. And maybe it is the four sacred words of the Egyptian religion. Maybe it is not. And in fact, there's really not a whole lot of people that know about the four sacred words of the Egyptian religion. There again, you've got the four sacred words, four sacred words. It's on a helmet. And now here it's in his mouth. That's one of the reasons why I call it the four sacred words. And he has the Michigan symbol for remember. Okay. I say that they're the serpent tribe. You, you saw it on the map. And so we have lots of depictions of serpents. And then you've got this one here, which appears to be the serpent mound with solar alignments being pointed out on it. Now, I don't think anybody back in 1982 knew about the solar alignments of the serpent mound. So it's just kind of a, um, a notch of credibility for Russell Burroughs here. We've got symbols of Tanith. If you've never heard of Tanith, she is the consort to Baal Haman. Baal Haman and Tanith were the god and goddess of Carthage, which is a Phoenician city in Tunisia, Africa. See, he's got the symbol of Tanith right there. Tanith. Tanith, the bull, which is also a symbol of Baalism, and the ram, which is also a symbol of Baalism. So it very much appears that these people were worshipers of Baal. They're also holding into the Egyptian religion, which if you really dig into it, you, you may find that the Egyptian religion and the, and the Phoenician religion are really one and the same, except that the Phoenicians are going to pay their tributes to the local gods, which is Belhamond and Tanith. But when they when the dead are entombed, you know, here the Egyptians would send their pharaoh, their dead pharaoh on the boat across the river as symbolic of crossing over into the other world. And they do that prior to placing them in the tomb. It looks like they must have been doing that here also. And now here you've got Anubis the god of mummification, and he's got a, a coffin that is not mummified. It's just a skeleton in here. I thought that was very interesting. It's To me, that's another sign of credibility for Russell Burroughs. 
Many of these artifacts have the Star of David and the menorah. See this guy right here, the Star of David, the Kippa Yamaka, the menorah here, and serpents next to the menorah. They were mariners. These boats very much look like Phoenician boats, except Phoenician boats seem to always have the horse. And these do not have the horse. They have other creatures at the helm. And they are single mass boats. So once again, you got the four sacred words with serpents swallowing the four sacred words. You've got this symbol of an upside down V with two strokes on the right. I have a theory as to what this means. I actually think it means that they're mariners, and I'm gonna show you that in a moment, but you've got, they're, they're actually viewing a volcano from the ocean. This is some artwork from Bev Moserly of Jesus walking on the water, and the word for walk in Hebrew is L-L-K-T, and here we have L-K, and then we've got this symbol which is kind of like a cut from the water right there. So I believe that this right here says walk on water and then the four sacred symbols. Um, one time when we were looking at the artifacts, we saw me and Rick Osmond were looking at the artifacts and we saw a, uh, an artifact with Lake Michigan that had these upside down V's just all over the lake. They were disconnected. So it wasn't the water symbol, but they were disconnected upside down V's on water. So that that solidified to me that this upside down V means water, like at water, okay? Walking on the water. So uh, so as my theory is that the, the two strokes with the upside down V is a symbol of their nation, just like the medicine wheel, and it's basically saying that, that we are mariners. Two strokes could be an L for two. There's a lot of this symbol right here, which some people suggest might mean pata. I don't think it does. If it's if it is Egyptian, this is P T H in Egyptian for the name pata. However, the word sky is P T with the symbol of heaven or sky right there, and we have P with the symbol of heaven or sky right there. P with a symbol of heaven or sky right there. So I actually think that this means sky. And we've got individuals who are considered to be sky people. I find that rather interesting. I don't know why they're sky people. One person has suggested that perhaps they hold great intellect and they were dropped from the, the heavens to bless the people. I think, you know, maybe that's correct. Maybe they are people of great intellect. Maybe they're simply people who hang out in the watchtowers as watching for the enemy. So maybe that's the people that are the sky people. Maybe there's another reason why they're sky people. I don't know. There's one artifact that seems to depict human sacrifice. When Mr. Burroughs went into the cave, he did see a death mask on a skeleton and there was a golden dagger in the sternum of the body. And so he believes that there was human sacrifice there and this particular artifact seems to indicate that that may be the case. Someone else may look at this and say, well, no, maybe that's Abraham with Isaac. Were they friendly to the Yohewa people? The Yohewa people were the people that were in Michigan when the Michigan tablets were being created. That symbol is used all over in the, in the Michigan artifacts. The symbol is found in these artifacts too indicating that they are a people, but it is not them. And then you've got this map here and it shows that the, that the Yohewa people were living down here south of Lake Michigan when this map was created. So this is where we get into the forbidden archeology span because now we've got artifacts depicting horses, elephants, chariots. Okay, another elephant. We've got depictions of Jesus Christ. You've got Christ riding on a donkey as a child with the star of Bethlehem over the inn. And you've got the cross and it says Yohewa for Jehovah. You've got this artifact right here, which looks like Christ. I mean, it's got the markings in the, in the wrist. 
and you've got the Michigan symbol for righteousness right there. Once again, you got Yohewa right there for this person who is righteous. You've got the marking in the wrist and I look at this and I'm sitting here and saying that I think that looked that this looks a heck of a lot like Yeshua. He's righteous, crosses. So for a conclusion, I'd say that these are a Jewish people. They were worshipers of Baal. They were known as the Serpent Tribe. Perhaps they built the Serpent Mound. They had a writing system that is influenced by the Phoenician alphabet, although it is not perfect Phoenician alphabet. They had a national identity of the circle and the cross. They had the Star of David and the menorah as part of their identity, and they engaged in human sacrifice, apparently. They engaged in Egyptian rituals. They built large boats. And they had horses and elephants. So that's pretty much the, the story that I wanted to show you. In the next video, I will start going over some of the translations um, and just show you how it's working out, the methodology that I use and um, let you see what you think. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.